These are some of the most arrogant chefs on MasterChef. And this one right here wasn't just arrogant, but also mean, insensitive, and overall a huge bully. The red team had to face the pressure test after losing the team challenge. Before the test commenced, Chef Ramsay asked Savannah Sturges who was the weakest performer. So she reluctantly named Chrissy, and when Chef Ramsay asked Brie Cozior, she also named Chrissy. After that, Chef Ramsay announced that only four members would be participating in the pressure test, and the one who wouldn't compete would be chosen by the red team. They only had five minutes to discuss, and during their discussion, things escalated between Brie and Chrissy. As they began to discuss their problems, Chrissy complained about being singled out as the weakest performer by the red team. Hearing this, Brie told her to stop taking it so personally, but Chrissy wasn't ready to back down. No, no way. Three times I told you that I didn't think it was a good idea to see No, you them. didn't. Chrissy was stubborn and put the whole blame on Savannah. And when Savannah still tried to point out what she said during the challenge, Chrissy started cursing. Brie then had enough of Chrissy's attitude and things got really out of hand. You too, dude. I didn't say it was Who were you? Team. What did you I didn't do on say this team? It was a bit. Chrissy then threatened to punch Brie if she didn't shut up, but Brie stood up for herself. You can't sit here and talk to me like an adult. All you ever want to do is hit everyone in the face. The team then chose Jordan Roots to save face, and as a result, Luca, Brie, Savannah, and Chrissy were put in the pressure test. They ultimately hoped that Chrissy would finally get eliminated because everybody was sick and tired of her attitude. Well, that's one way of getting on everyone's nerves, but this next contestant made a disgusting mistake that definitely shouldn't go unpunished. In the 12th episode of season 4, the top 12 were introduced to Anya and Aaron by the judges. They explained that they would be cooking for the couple's wedding. This was basically another team challenge. Anya gave a list of food items that she didn't want to see at her wedding reception, and this left a lot of cooks in dismay. Chef Ramsay then revealed that they would receive help and guidance from him and Chef Graham to ensure things went smoothly. To be a little bit more specific, Ramsay and Graham took charge of both the appetizers and dessert courses, and the top 12 focused on just the entrees. The home cooks were divided into two teams and cooked for over 100 guests, of which 15 were vegetarian. Since Natasha Kurniak and James Nelson were the winners of the previous challenge, they got to pick their teams. James, who is the blue team's captain, chose Lynn, Jesse, Bree, Johnny, and Luca. Meanwhile, Natasha, the red team's captain, chose Eddie Jackson, Savannah Sturges, Bethany Rosos, Jordan Roots, and Chrissy. As an added little bonus, Natasha and James also got to exempt one team member from cooking in the challenge. This would grant them immunity should their team lose. Shockingly, they chose to exempt Chrissy and Brie. Now, both teams were given two hours for the challenge. Natasha and James were invited to taste Chef Graham's appetizer, a pea soup with whipped cream fraiche. Plus, they tasted Chef Ramsay's dessert, sticky toffee pudding with brown bread, ice cream, and caramel sauce. They now had to execute their dishes at the same level as the judges. This definitely wasn't going to be an easy task. In the blue team, James decided on a rack lamb with parsnip puree. It would also include a vegetarian side dish of grilled mushroom over goat cheese creme fraiche. In the red team, Natasha decided on a halibut beurre blanc, and for the vegetarian dish, the team decided on an eggplant and tomato stack. As the wedding ceremony started, the preparation began at the back. The red team started to struggle, with them burning carrots to a crisp, much to the judges' amusement. Since Natasha seemed to be falling apart, Chef Ramsay went and asked her if she was alright, since she looked really flustered. Natasha said that she needed more support from her team, much to the red team's dismay. Chef Ramsay then told Natasha to refocus, bring her team together, and asked her to be more vocal. But Natasha didn't seem to be listening to Chef Ramsay, and that angered him deeply. Meanwhile, the blue team's preparation was going smoothly, but the red team was still struggling badly. As the reception began, Chef Graham's appetizer made its way to the guests' tables. And well, obviously, everyone enjoyed it. After a delicious appetizer, the guests' expectations were really high. Both teams needed to deliver the exact top-notch quality. With only 30 seconds left to go for the entrees in the red team, Savannah still needed 3 more minutes with her prep. This made the judges incredibly worried. The blue team assigned Lin with the presentation, and he wasn't executing things up to expectations. Looking at this mess, Chef Ramsay was frustrated, and the delay only made things worse. Everyone's just stopped all of a sudden! I've never seen such disorganization! The first serving was at the bride and groom's table, and both teams weren't ready yet. In the red team, Natasha was trying to do everything by herself, which made Chef Ramsay furious. You have to stop running around like a headless chicken. You position yourself at the table and you expedite. The red team finally got it together and sent out their first plate. The blue team was also ready, only to be stopped by a very angry Chef Ramsay for serving it on dirty plates. The red team's halibut dish was served to the bride and groom's table, whereas the blue team replated their lamb rack dish. And this made Chef Ramsay extremely angry with the blue team. 
and it's taken seven minutes to get four plates out. You're all running around like headless chickens. The blue team finally got back on track and their dish made it to the dining room. In the red team, Natasha finally got herself together and showed some commendable leadership skills. But the blue team was still behind, much to Chef Ramsay's frustration. Got two tables, drag in the blue team's entrees, come on! Lin started feeling the pressure of having to keep up with the service. He started sweating profusely and he was violating the health code. Seeing this, Chef Ramsay became infuriated. I know it's hard, you cannot sweat in the food. Lin was plating the dishes inconsistently and an annoyed Chef Ramsay asked him if he was blind in one eye. Joe then came and informed Chef Ramsay about tables with no blue plates, leaving the guests hungry. Things were so bad that Joe feared the guests would leave without tasting the blue team's dishes. The stress got to Lin so much that he started making a huge mistake. And that mistake doubled Chef Ramsay's anger. He used the same cloth to wipe the plates that he used to wipe his sweat. Yuck. One guest even told Joe that if he had been in the restaurant, he would have walked out. On the other hand, the red team was sending out their plates at a good pace. The blue team was making mistake after mistake, and seeing nothing going right, Chef Ramsay put Chef Graham as the expediter. With Chef Graham's help, the blue team was finally sending out their dishes. But obviously, it was the red team who won this challenge. However, in this next entry, two teams locked horns over one challenge. But when you don't adhere to the rules, you face the consequences. And no, it's not pretty. In the 14th episode of Season 3, the top 14 competed in a team challenge. They needed to cook a breakfast for 130 guests residing in the same hotel they were staying at. The judges split them into two teams, with seven members in each team. Since Christine Ha and Josh Marks were the winners of the previous challenge, they were named the team captains and got to choose who they wanted in their team. Christine was the captain of the red team and she chose Felix Fang, Scott Little, Tanya Noble, Mike Hill, Stacey Amagrand, and Ryan Umane. Josh was the captain of the blue team and he chose Becky Reams, Frank Mirando, Anna Rossi, Monte Carlo, David Martinez, and Tali Clavijo. The judges then revealed that Christina had an advantage of swapping a member. Since she had the best dish in the previous challenge, she swapped Ryan out for Becky. The judges then assigned the breakfast menu, fruit salad, pancakes, oatmeal, eggs benedict, egg white omelette, and two eggs with bacon and spinach style. Both teams had 90 minutes for prep and 90 minutes for serving the 130 guests. The teams needed to pick an expediter, so in the blue team, they picked Monty, and in the red team, they picked Felix. In the blue team, Josh assigned David to the oatmeal, Anna and Tally to the fruit salad, Frank to the pancakes, and everyone else except for Monty to the omelettes and eggs benedict. In the red team, Christine assigned herself and Becky to the eggs benedict, Scott to the pancakes, and everyone else except for Felix to the oatmeal, fruit salads, and omelettes. With only 35 minutes left before the service began, Chef Ramsay got concerned with the red team. It seemed like they didn't make enough hollandaise sauce for the eggs benedict. In the blue team, Chef Graham was concerned with their bacon and spinach. Both teams were making the judges concerned. But from the red team, Christine was concerned with Felix not being so vocal like how Monty was in the blue team. As the service began, in the blue team, Monty and Josh got off to a little screaming match. Now, because of that, the red team's first order didn't go out on time. And, well, this frustrated Chef Ramsay. And for the last five minutes, you've just shut down and there's no communication going on. Meanwhile, the blue team served theirs and they were also sending out orders at a good pace. The blue team was receiving good reviews from their guests, but the red team faced another problem. Felix tried to solve the problem by using minimal sauce on the eggs benedict, but that's not how it works. An eggs benedict needs to have a good amount of hollandaise sauce. Seeing this, Chef Ramsay chewed her out and told her that it wasn't a dessert that she was drizzling the sauce on. Since Felix was going nowhere with her communication, Christine took charge of being the vocal leader. And because of that, the red team rose up from disaster. In the blue team, their standards dropped down since Chef Ramsay discovered pancakes coming out sloppy and Eggs Benedict being raw. And this made Chef Ramsay annoyed. You're cooking them, he's taking them, you're serving them. It's raw! Things got even worse for the blue team when Joe returned with a plate with hair on it. In the red team, Felix finally started communicating pretty well and orders started flying out. Meanwhile, in the blue team, Josh and Monty got into an argument and things were falling apart. Dude, that was a hot, that's ridiculous. What's going on? Now, time was up for both teams. However, Felix didn't pay attention to the announcement of the challenge being over and continued to work. And this pissed Chef Ramsay off. I just told you, time is up. Sorry, I'm, I'm no, so look at me. No cheating. Despite all the problems, the red team was declared the winner. As you may know, Season 12 brought back some culinary veterans for an all-star showdown, including some junior contestants too. 
But here's the burning question. Did the home cooks learn from their past mistakes? Well, they were about to find out. And what better trial by fire than having to feed the US Coast Guard? I mean, can you even imagine the pressure? Now, each team was tasked with preparing a hearty meal for over 100 hungry servicemen and women. The blue team consisting of cooks from seasons 1 to 7 faced off against the red team featuring home cooks from seasons 8 to 11. Alejandro stepped up as the captain for the red team while Christian led the charge for the blue team. And the stakes? Well, one person from the losing team would face elimination. So the red team kicked things off with some stakes. But hold up, Chef Ramsay caught wind that they were serving up cold cuts. The tray's cold, the steak's cold. I'm not gonna let you just send f out. Not exactly the kind of hot start they were aiming for, right? Of course, Chef Ramsay being the guy that he is, wasn't pleased. He made sure that they turned up the heat with some very choice words. And in a wild twist, he shuffled the Coast Guard over to the blue team's turf instead. But guess what? The blue team wasn't doing much better either. We have no mash. Oh my god. The mashed potatoes were still cooking, and Chef Ramsay's frustration, well, oh, it was practically radiating through the screen. Despite it all though, the initial feedback the diners gave seemed surprisingly positive for both teams. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. Anyway, in the midst of serving up food for the Coast Guard, a raw steak made an unwelcome appearance, and Chef Ramsay, in pure Ramsay fashion, did this. Oh man. Well, thankfully, the fish were probably going to appreciate that much more than the Coast Guard. But brace yourself for the real shocker of the afternoon. Alejandro, undeterred by the steak now sleeping with the fishes, decided to play a risky game. He picked up a tray of steaks that had fallen down onto the floor by mistake and tossed them right back onto the grill. They're going to get cooked. Seriously, how dumb could you be? Well, apparently, it was enough to kill the bacteria it picked up from the floor at least according to our man Alejandro. So no harm, no foul, right? Uh, I shouldn't even need to mention Chef Ramsay's reaction to this. You think I'm going to keep you as a captain? I yes. stuck them on the grill because I thought I'd kill the bacteria. Yeah, there was no coming back from that tongue lashing. Anyway, one user pointed out how Alejandro didn't learn one thing since his last stint on the show. Two of his teammates told him that the meat wasn't done and that it was too rare and were even proven right and yet all he said to them was trust me, trust me. This guy just doesn't listen. And then there was the whole drop steak thing. Anyway, with the chaos reaching epic proportions, Chef Ramsay took the opportunity to fire Alejandro as the team captain and appointed Michael to take charge instead. Just when the red team was careening over the edge of disaster, Chef Ramsay's quick thinking of appointing a better leader saved the day. Uh-huh, the man is built for that kind of thing. But most of the time, those warnings of his fall on some real deaf ears. And the result is never good. Well, what happened in Season 4, Episode 5 was the absolute epitome of that. The challenge was that the contestants had to form teams and whip up a feast for a bunch of pint-sized food critics. Now, Jordan took the reins of the captain of the blue team and was tasked with satisfying the taste buds of an entire elementary school. I'm sure all of you with kids can understand how tall of a task that is. In his lineup, he recruited Adriana, Kathy, Howard, Johnny, Savannah, Eddie, James, and Chrissy. Looking like a dream team, right? Well, on paper you'd think so. Anyway, what exactly was their mission, you ask? It was to create a menu that included turkey meatballs with pasta, green beans, and an apple crisp for dessert. Sounds delicious, right? But wait, 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 hold on. Even before things really got going, Chef Ramsay had some major doubts. How many meatballs per portion? We'll probably be right, right around two. If it's going to be so short, we'll check the balls. So two balls. Yeah. I mean, feeding 300 kids? That's a whole lot of meatballs. We're talking about a thousand or more, minimum. Chef Ramsay knew that there was no way a bunch of amateurs could figure that out, especially with a time crunch looming over them. 600 yeah. meatballs are going to make? 600 meatballs. Oh my god. The pressure was on, the clock was ticking, and you couldn't help but wonder, would the blue team somehow be able to pull off this miracle? Well, I wouldn't be talking about it right now if they did, would I? The blue team stumbled right out of the gate, starting fashionably late. Guys, we just started making meatballs. 20 more to get to 600 meatballs. And amidst the chaos, Chrissy, with some kind of culinary sixth sense, saw the impending catastrophe as well. The time it's taken us making all these meatballs is just stupid. I mean, that's not a superpower or anything, it's just basic knowledge a chef should have. Or like, basic math skills. Hopefully those kids were being taught better than them. 
Meanwhile, the judges, who were eagerly awaiting a feast, were dumbfounded by the sluggish progress of the blue team. More than 600 meatballs were on the line, and the team's sluggish speed wasn't exactly moving things along. As the clock kept ticking, the blue team found themselves in a very tough situation where they shockingly couldn't make all those meatballs. And in a desperate attempt to salvage this sinking ship, a tactical shift was in order and it needed to come fast. We need to start diversing and someone step up and take responsibility. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay was completely livid. With every passing minute, his tolerance dwindled further and further. And that's when Jordan came into the picture and, well, he had a weird solution. In a light bulb moment, he decided to switch gears and whip up some meat sauce instead. We're just gonna do a meat sauce. Don't even, hey, you don't need to roll them anymore. But guess what? Things were about to get real saucy. With barely a minute left on the clock, the green beans were still having some major issues. One minute to go. Bean salad, I need it ASAP. But they were really just a symptom of the bigger issues at hand. In the grand scheme of these unfortunate events, a trifecta of poor decisions, a dash of terrible teamwork, and a generous sprinkle of abysmal leadership, the teammates crumbled under the pressure like never before. However, what happened in this next episode will make you question everything you know about the basics of cooking duck. Okay, so stick with me for a second because Sean and Katie had their sights set high. Together, they decided to whip up scallops for the appetizer and duck breast for the main course. And let's be real, these proteins are no walk in the park at the best of times. They're both real fickle in terms of timing. But well, how else could they prove their worth? So these contestants decided to go all in with this huge risk, hoping for some huge rewards on the other end of this challenge. So Juni took the helm for the blue team while Julia commanded the red team. This was a strategic move that added an extra layer of unpredictability to the kitchen showdown. And once they stepped into the cooking tent, it was game on. The planning commenced and things got real strategic real quick. Julia faced a bit of resistance to her menu ideas initially, but like a true captain, she held her ground and rallied her team's support. Now, Chef Ramsay was on a mission to check the red team's progress. Little did he know he was about to uncover a disaster the likes of which he'd only seen on Kitchen Nightmares before. Turns out, the team had seasoned the duck before cooking it, a move that even the rookiest of rookies know spells disaster. Salt pulls moisture out of things after all. And Chef Ramsay's fury reached new heights when he figured out what they'd done. We never season them until you cook them, because when you hit the pan, there's going to be watery. Would the red team recover from this seasoning setback, or would they serve up a ducking disaster? Well, you'll need to wait for an upcoming video of mine to find out. But for now, nothing could prepare me for this bizarre wait. Get a cloth and dry them. Get rid of the seasoning quickly. Yeah, it was one of those kind of moves that would make Chef Ramsay question his life choices. And not surprisingly, what happened next was truly shocking. Blue team, we're all over the place. No one's communicating, and the captains disappeared. Meanwhile, over on the blue team, it seemed like they too were on a mission to test Chef Ramsay's patience right from the start. And yeah, their menu idea raised more than a few eyebrows. Put your hands in the air if you've ever seen an orange zested mash in any restaurant anywhere in the world. The famous chef even called their idea downright foolish before the blue team had to do some serious menu soul searching. He demanded better ideas, prompting them to reshuffle their entire meal plan in a race against the clock. So what do you think happened? Would the blue team rise from the ashes of their initial blunder, or was Chef Ramsay about to declare a culinary state of emergency? Huh, just when you thought the blue team had weathered the storm, turns out they went all in for yet another culinary tempest. The party have sat down and the puree's raw. Blue team, we're all over the place. Yup, they were all set to serve a puree, but the pureeing part wasn't exactly flawlessly executed. As if that wasn't enough, Juni walked in with a whole plate of garlic mashed potatoes which were equally time consuming and, dare I say, uninspiring. Meanwhile, Shanika tried to steer the ship in the right direction, offering some guidance of her own, but Juni clung to his garlic-laden dream with as much stubbornness as he could possibly muster. In Juni's world, the garlic mashed potatoes were the pinnacle of wedding feast perfection. I mean, from my perspective, I think it would put off the bride and groom from kissing each other, but you do you, man. Anyway, Chef Ramsay didn't have the patience to wait and watch. He stepped in once again and let the blue team have it. How does that become a stunning mash? What's more, upon learning Shanika's wisdom, Chef Ramsay urged the team to follow her lead. And yeah, Juni eventually conceded, but that didn't mean that he didn't find himself at a crossroads. The stakes were very high, and Chef Ramsay had a crucial decision to make. 
You are not going to captain this team any longer. Have a meeting and somebody step up and run this team. If not, I'm going to run it. In a dramatic turn of events, the famous chef stripped Juni of his rank. Taylor immediately stepped into the role with clear vocalization of ideas and strategic direction. That was her signature style in action. It was a clear contrast to Juni's mismanagement. Eventually, the blue team, under Taylor's guidance, managed to salvage the situation and finish things off on a high note. However, let's be honest, victory eluded them, leaving them with a taste of both redemption and the bitter reality of a culinary near miss. Now, let's talk about the mystery box challenge in season 15. This is when each contestant got their mystery box ingredients to whip up something magical in under 60 minutes. You've got one hour. Show us that you mean business. But here's the catch. The judges were only tasting three dishes, so the contestants had to impress them with a top-notch presentation. Eventually, Adrian was crowned as the mystery box champ, and he got to strut into the MasterChef pantry and handpick the ingredient for the elimination test. And what was the theme for that week? Well, check this out. Theme for today's elimination test is... Desserts. Desserts. But Adrian got to play a little devilish game. Maybe serve up his fellow competitors their just desserts in the process? Which ingredient are you choosing for you and for your competitors? And his options were coffee, pineapples, and nuts. Adrian walked back to the kitchen after choosing nuts for himself and coffee for everybody else. And let me tell you, that revelation got a hell of a mixed reaction. Come on, seriously? Coffee's something I love, it's something I know. Fast forward 90 minutes after a hell of an intense cooking session, but that's its own story, and then it was judgment time. Adrian stepped up first, and this is what Graham said after tasting his dessert. Well, it seems like you chose chocolate as your ingredient. The nuts are just kind of a garnish on top. Chef Ramsay was also disappointed. You can't really identify what we've done different from the nuts on top to the nuts inside that mixture. Despite having the advantage, Adrian still messed up the challenge. And trust me, Joe didn't plan on coddling this guy either. I think you took an incredible advantage and squandered it. Well, he definitely wasn't wrong. Adrian had blown his one opportunity. But guess what? He wasn't the only one. There were bad dishes all around, including Jenny, who had the audacity to serve up a raw tart. But to make a very long story short, the three names were eventually announced. Jenny with her raw tart, Alvin with what Chef Ramsay called a coffee blood clot, ouch, and you'd expect Adrian to be number three, right? Well, I've got some news for you. Forget about Adrian, I haven't even gotten started on Max yet. So let's rewind a little bit. Max stepped up, armed with desserts that seemed to be designed to embarrass the living daylights out of himself. Chef Ramsay took the first bite, and guess how he reacted. Damn. Yup, he went silent. Oh man, it was one of those moments where you could almost feel the tension through the screen. Instead of just giving his verdict right away, Chef Ramsay threw a curveball at Max and asked him to taste it. And what did Max do? It's like I've just gone to the doctors for a skin graft on my butt and mm -hmm. stuck it in caramel. That is a it is horrible, horrible, weird <laughs> texture. He stood there beaming with confidence. He was smiling as if he had just served up a dessert fit for a king. But hold on, Chef Ramsay wasn't letting him off the hook that easy. He laid down the brutal truth about how embarrassing his dessert was at this level of the competition. You'd think Max would be shrinking into a puddle of shame, right? Nope, he was grinning from ear to ear for some reason. Next, it was time for Graham to take a bite, and how do you think he reacted? <laughs> yeah, his face spoke a lot more than his words. He just could not come to terms with what he had just eaten. And then, he went on to deliver a final blow. He called out the dish for its horrible texture and basically warned him that he should be seriously worried. You know, the fact that it's an elimination test, it's serious. I mean, the situation was so embarrassing that Awkward doesn't even begin to cover it. Anyway, time to cut to the chase. Chef Ramsay didn't hold back, stating that Jenny's dish was a serious contender for being the worst dish of the night, but guess what? Two others were even worse, so luckily she was in the clear. This time. Now, when it came to Alvin, Chef Ramsay delivered the gut punch. His dish took the crown for being the worst of the night, and it was time for him to say goodbye. Ouch. But hey, at least Alvin got a parting note about being courageous, but needing to nail the basics before moving forward. And on the bright side, look at who survived to cook another day. You 
back on your station. Thank you, Chef. Mystery box challenges never cease to amaze me. And this one from season six is no different for all the wrong reasons. So what happened is, Derek was named the man of the hour, and part of his advantage, he got to choose the fate of the elimination challengers. Your first advantage is that you not have to cook in tonight's elimination challenge. But as always, there's a twist. <laughs> a TV dinner. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Mom's meatloaf. <laughs> Look at this beauty. <laughs> It was all about elevating something everyone's pulled out of their freezer at some point, a TV dinner. But not just any TV dinner, oh no. The options were turkey, meatloaf, or Salisbury steak, each featuring a judge's face with a fake mustache because why not, right? Now, Derek got to pick just one of them and the contestants had to whip up a gourmet version in just one hour. <laughs> Salisbury steak with a broccoli and mac and cheese. Salisbury steak with mac and cheese and broccoli was on the menu. Veronica was practically celebrating since she'd been a TV dinner connoisseur for 59 years. I'm not sure if I should be proud or scared for her. Salisbury steak is one of my favorite dishes. But hold on, there was a wicked twist to come. Derek, reveling in his final advantage, got to play the puppet master. He could pick one contestant who had to stand there and do nothing for the first 15 minutes. Derek, grinning from ear to ear, singled out Christopher. And believe me, things were about to get heated. I can't really believe that Derek would target me. I'm so angry right now, I could see a steak on my forehead. Meanwhile, Jesse decided to go all out with venison meat and planned to whip up some fried mac and cheese. And this is when he found out something. If there's one thing I've loved in this country is mac and cheese. I've never had a fried mac and cheese. I've had it before and I've cooked it before, but I'll have to see if I can get that. Turns out, Chef Ramsay had never tried fried mac and cheese, and you could practically hear the collective gas from all around. Meanwhile, Veronica got a gentle nudge from Christina about her usual lackluster presentation. Every time we've had something that's delicious from you, presentation, how you've elevated it visually, what do you have planned? Well, consider that a warning. Christina also wanted to know what Veronica had up her sleeve, and guess what was Veronica's response? She said that it would look like a TV dinner. And this left the judges baffled. It's already set for me. It's going to look like a TV dinner. Okay, you, you did hear the point. Christina, trying to maintain her composure, asked Veronica if she heard what the challenge was all about. It was to elevate the TV dinner and make it restaurant quality. Well, of course, Veronica knew the rules. It's just that she couldn't care less. She made a casual hand move towards the judges to dismiss their apprehensions and then said, My grandkids are waiting to hear you guys say awesome. Oops, it looks like Granny's got her own rules. But let's see if it could save her from elimination. Moreover, Christina tried one last time to drill in the importance of presentation before they decided to move on. Please keep in mind presentation elevation. I will. Okay. I will. You'll be proud. And finally, Veronica stepped up with her creation, and boy oh boy, it was a disaster. I asked you to cook one portion of a TV dinner. It looked like she raided the rejects from an old country buffet, tossed them in some bowls, and called it a day. Sloppy, gloppy, basically every word that ends in PY you could think of, except happy. Definitely not happy. Chef Ramsay was so incredibly disappointed, and it was written all over his face. This thing looks like it's fit for King Kong's kitchen. He wanted to make his point clear. Veronica had completely missed the objective. But she genuinely looked surprised for some reason. Seriously? How are you surprised when Christina warned you about this just minutes ago? Chef Ramsay laid it out for her saying, I asked you to cook one portion of a TV dinner to make it elegant and upscale it. This thing looks like it's fit for King Kong's kitchen. Well, the famous chef always has a way with his words. And yep, he tried to drive home the point once again, just so there wouldn't be any misunderstanding. How many times over the last three or four weeks have I asked you to refine things down to a plate? I think it's a refined dish. It's awesome. She continued to claim that her dish was awesome. And that's not all, because what happened next was absolutely disgusting. What's this in here? What's the water in there? What is that? The water nah. has wilted out of the broccoli. As Chef Ramsay poured out what seemed like a gallon of liquid from the bowl of broccoli, he groaned and then gave her a stare that said it all. You're still cooking like we're at a Vegas buffet and three compartments of it has been filled up with puke. If that wasn't already embarrassing enough, he then started to walk away. Veronica was devastated. 
She secretly hoped someone else would screw up just to avoid being sent home. The struggle was real. And well, Jesse might just turn out to be the candidate to fulfill her wish. However, despite feeling good about his dish, Chef Ramsay didn't hold back with his critique. Jesse. Yes, sir. I have to say it's one of the most bizarre looking dishes of the night. Jesse made a venison Salisbury steak with broccoli and fried mac and cheese, and this is how the judges reacted. Jesse, it's like swallowing a mouthful of sand. It is seriously dry. The venison appeared dry, and his pickled broccoli wrapped in prosciutto was compared to a weird new age children's toy rather than something edible. What's more, Chef Ramsay summed up his tasting experience as swallowing a mouthful of sand. Yikes, I can't even imagine that. But guess what Jesse did? Instead of just taking the feedback, he decided to ask Chef Ramsay some really weird questions. I mean, how do you like venison? I, I know what venison is. It doesn't work. Even though Jesse tried to argue against the dryness, Chef Ramsay's verdict stood as it is, and Jesse reluctantly accepted it. I've cooked it a thousand times, and when venison turns from red to bright white, it's dry. Yes, sir. The inevitable moment finally arrived, and the three underperformers, Hedel, Jesse, and Veronica, were called up. And guess who got eliminated? Your time is now up. Please take off your apron and go ahead and leave it on your bench. Veronica was swiftly sent home packing, having consistently missed the mark. She bid everyone goodbye, claiming that her family would love her cooking even more now that she had been featured on the show. But once again, MasterChef is full of surprises. And Chef Ramsay decided to drop another bomb. While the contestants were now down to the top 15, he said that it was soon about to be the top 14. Yup, we're in double elimination territory now. Chef Ramsay first called out Heddle, claiming that her performance was a huge stumbling block. As for Jesse, this is what happened. Take off your apron and place it on your bench. Yup, and just like that, Jesse joined Veronica on her one-way trip out of the MasterChef kitchen. So, do you remember any other embarrassing MasterChef moments that I missed? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, do not forget to check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.